Well, this is the uh, engine compartment of a 1970 Dodge Charger. Very iconic car. The uh, engine is a 383 four barrel Enco car, by the way. Uh, and it is a 383 four barrel hypo motor in this vehicle. The correct style dual snorkel air cleaner for 1970. It does have a set of Mopar chrome valve pan covers uh, added to it and a uh, <coughs> Mopar uh, tarantula type manifold. It's a single plane uh, X type manifold on it uh, that really produces a lot of a lot of mid-range power in these vehicles. It has its original style Carter ABS carburetor on it. It has a Presto-like appearing distributor to it, but the body appears to be uh, billet aluminum. I've never seen one like this before. That's a machined uh, body on it, and like I said, it appears to be a Presto light, but and it even has a Presto light ca cap on it. But just never seen an aluminum body Presto light distributor like that before. This guy got one. Uh, new alternator on it, new belts. Motor's been out and completely freshened up. New water pump on it. Correct uh, uh, radiator in this vehicle. It does have a 24-inch uh, radiator in it, which usually means that it came with uh, uh, 323 gears in it. Uh, the uh, core support is undisrupted. It still has its number stamped on the uh, front of the core support. And also the uh, uh, fender tag still intact. And the uh, VIN tag on the dash is totally undisrupted with also the six-sided rivets that hold it in place. Again, you can see, that, well, you'll see it from Devin's still photos. The core support area shows you that this car's never suffered any trauma whatsoever. It's just as fresh and clean as it was when it was new. The um, inner panels, and the, the car appears to be, we'll see once we're underneath it, but it appears to be a total uh, rotisserie restoration. Uh, everything is too nice inside the uh, engine compartment here. Power steering, power brakes, um, don't know if they're disc or not yet, we'll sell that from underneath. The uh, fan is a uh, fixed uh, seven blade fan. The um, shocks are new, I can tell that from on top. It does have a set of uh, long tube uh, headers on it. I don't know the manufacturer, but they are a set of long tube and they appear to have some type of a high temp uh, coating on them. Uh, three speed wiper motor, electronic ignition. The uh, heat is still hooked up to the passenger compartment. So if it happens to go to one of the northern states, uh, you still have uh, compartment heat uh, available to you. The uh, engine compartment in this is just exemplary. There's no, uh, there's no imperfections whatsoever in the paint, in the finish, in the fitment. Uh, these motors made uh, 335 horse from the factory, uh, definitely overachievers. They uh, actually produced uh, far in excess of that. And this one having uh, that X-type manifold on it and a set of headers and a little bit more cam, I'm sure it's, uh, it's making some substantial horsepower. It's a great engine compartment. I don't see anything whatsoever out of line. Dual horns on it. Uh, washer bottle still intact on this side. Uh, the, um, uh, this is actually an overflow bottle right here, but the washer bottle is the uh, correct style uh, washer bottle that uh, came with this vehicle, and it still has its pump and everything hooked up for it. There's no leaks whatsoever evident on it, the valve pan covers or the front of the engine around the timing chain cover, um, power steering pump. Um, steering box. I don't see any leaks at all, but again, we'll see that better once we get underneath it. But as far as the engine compartment itself is concerned, this is just an exemplary uh, uh, engine compartment for a 1970 Dodge Charger. Hi, you're at Hanksters in Daytona Beach, Florida, and uh, we have a really, really unique uh, guest for you on the floor today. 1970 Dodge Charger. These things are so iconic and so popular at this point in time. I can't overemphasize it. And Kevin found this one somewhere, and we have it for sale here. So we're going to go over it and see if we can uh, pick out anything on it for you. Uh, the paint on this one is not driver quality. This is absolute show quality finish on this vehicle. The fitment, you can see an eighth of inch the whole way and across the uh, back of the hood where it transitions onto the uh, cowl area. But the fitment from the fender to the hood, to the cowl, everything is just exemplary. Turn signal lights still in the uh, inset just the way they should be. Um, a rubber piece that goes across the front here between the bumper and the hood, uh, nice and resilient the way you'd hope it would be. A lot of them turn kind of solid through the years. Again, the same kind of fitment here. You can see a little over an eighth of an inch of 
gap the whole way up to the fender, to the hood, and look at the fitment. Look at this. Nice as you'd ever hope to find. Chrome on the front bumper. Absolutely not a scuff, a dent, a mark, a scratch, absolutely nothing. And you can see the fitment, the way it goes onto the uh, uh, front fenders is absolute precision. Grill area itself, of course, it has peekaboo headlights, Charger 500 on the uh, front, that's what it is. Um, Argentite uh, paint, correct for the ear. The grill itself has absolutely no chips or marks uh, or, or sections missing. It, it's plastic and it, um, it has no pieces missing. The alignment of the uh, headlight doors to the grill itself, the main section, are as nice and straight and linear as you could probably hope to find. The um, parking lights in the front are amber and the uh, valance, it's hard to see, but it uh, doesn't show any chips or marks or pulls or deviations whatsoever. So the front end of this car is as nice as you're ever going to find. And the paint is absolutely, absolute show quality on this vehicle. There's not a single imperfection uh, that I can see in the hood itself. Uh, dense things. Absolutely nothing that I can determine from just looking at it. And we're running my hands over it at this point. Um, let's go down the side see if there's something there. Okay, driver's side. Side marker lamp, no patina, nice and fresh looking, just as nice as you'd ever hope to find. Uh, this one does not have the optional uh, fender lip, uh, wheel lip moldings on it. But look at this here. Look. Unreal. Look at this. Rocker panel to the door, to the front fender, uh, to the top of the fender, to the cowl area. Absolute precision. Correct wiper arms and blades for this car. Uh, they appear to be uh, the correct type that uh, came with this vehicle. The um, padded dash itself has no warps or, or deviations whatsoever in it. It uh, uh, doesn't have any cracks. The um, bin tag, like I told you, is just as nice and fresh and clean as can be on the original metal part that goes from the padded dash to the base of the windshield, which it's absolute clarity the whole way across the bottom of it. There's absolutely no dirt or imperfections whatsoever in it. And the paint on the top of the, the metal part of the dash, just as clean and fresh as you'd ever hope to find. Trim around the front window. No imperfections whatsoever. Absolutely none. The roof looks like a sheet of red glass. It uh, doesn't have any imperfections in it. We hardly ever find anything on a roof. Very, very seldom. Uh, and this guy is just as flawless as you could ever hope to find a roof. Uh, it does have a uh, manually, uh, manually, remote adjust uh, mirror on the uh, inside. Chrome around the wing area, just as fresh and clean as you'd ever hope to find. There's no patina whatsoever. It's real common to see these with patina on them. Even this piece down here, this has none, zero. A mirror the same way, it's just nice and fresh and clean. The top of the uh, trim that goes across the top of the door and the uh, quarter panel is nice as you'd ever hope. Drip rail, no imperfections at all, absolutely none. Look at the window fitment, the front glass to the rear quarter glass, absolutely precise seal to it. There's absolutely no way that it's going to leak. Uh, door needs to go in just a hair. It, uh, it's just a little bit out. Uh, we have to adjust that in for you just a hair. Yeah, that has to go in just a little tiny bit. No big deal. One adjustment. That's the only thing we found so far. Charger designation. Usually these things are uh, kind of laden with some patina. This one has absolutely none. Cell panel area. There's absolutely no imperfections whatsoever in it. Trim around the back light. No dinghies, marks whatsoever. Hat shelf, which you can't see from where you're at, but the hat shelf is just as fresh and clean as it was the day this car left the factory. It has two auxiliary speakers in it. I don't know whose they are. Look like some type of a high-end uh, uh, speaker, though. It's all tin. Quick fuel system. Back in the day. 500 
designation side marker lamp in the back. Again, no patina on that. Nice fitment. So that's the entire section of this car on the uh, driver's side. Only thing we found so far, that door needs to go in just a tiny bit. Not very much, just a little tiny bit. It has a huge set of tires on the back. They're 15 inch uh, uh, Kelsey wheels. Um, Magnum 500s, whatever you want to call them. Plymouth call them road wheels, I believe. Uh, correct centers on them for Plymouth also. Uh, BFG uh, radial TAs, kind of everyone's choice for these vehicles at this point. And again, a huge set of tires in the back, uh, and a smaller set in the front, a little narrower. Uh, it has a nice look to it, real nice stance. These things have such huge wheel wells in the back that you got to fill them with something, and somebody really did with that one. I don't know what size it is, but you'll see it on our specification sheet that uh, Donnie writes up. Uh, but it'll tell you what size tire it is. Phenomenal paint on this car so far. I haven't found a single chip or a mark or a scuff uh, or an imperfection in it. Uh, one door adjustment and that's it. Let's go out back and see if we can find something else. Okay, rear section of our Charger. Uh, again, the fitment of the deck, look at this. Absolute precision. And the way everything lines up on it, it can't be any better. By the way, these stripes are painted on. This is not tape. This was painted with the vehicle whenever it was done. Again, the paint on this thing is just exemplary. It's not average. It's not driver quality. It's absolutely gorgeous paint. Absolutely. Okay, trim around the back. No marks, no dinghies. Wait a minute. Take it back. Little dinghy here, little dinghy here. Somebody taking something out of the trunk. Put a little tiny mark here. Certainly nothing you'd ever replace. You see it from the top. It's not on the side. You can't feel it there either. Uh, tail light assemblies, really dramatic on these vehicles. Got a huge set of inset tail lights here. Uh, semi flat black uh, inset in the back to really set this thing off. Bumper fitment in the back it is just about as sweet as you'd ever hope to find, just like it was up front. Uh, bumperettes in the back. There's no uh, deterioration whatsoever on them. Check the side here. There's no marks or dings or anything from uh, anyone backing this thing into anything or anyone tapping it through the years. The uh, rear volants with the parking lights still in them, the way they should be. There's no uh, deterioration also around the parking light uh, basils. Correct style exhaust tips going out the back for 1970. Rear volants fits just as it should. There's no pulls or marks whatsoever on it. And there's also no scuffs on the top of this bumper either. The chrome on it's very, very nice. Um, the alignment, uh, everything on the back end is just as sweet and nice as you'd ever hope to find. Like I said, these two little tiny, tiny dinghies. One here and one here. That's it. That's all we found. One more side. Okay, our last side, our passenger side. Again, take a look at this uh, Charger 500 designation. Painted on stripes. The uh, side marker lamp, uh, no patina whatsoever. Look at this, all tin. Quarter panel is just as fresh and nice as you'd hope to find. There's no deterioration whatsoever. Same thing with our charger nameplate here, the sail panel. Ah, trim around the back light on this side. Same as it was on the other side. Absolutely no imperfections, no deviations. This is all tin on this car. Now this door fits right on the money. You can't, well, I don't have to touch this one. This guy's going to stay just the way it is. Look at this, to the rocker panel, to the quarter panel, the door, just precision, nice fit. Front glass to the quarter glass, the same as it was on the other side. You can't really see them, but, and I can't even feel them, so I can't really voice an opinion, but there, I know there are wipes whiskers, but they're tucked down on this car because of this trim, and I can't really, can't really put my fingers on them, but judging from the rest of this car, I'm sure they're going to be exemplary just the way this car is. This piece here, same on the other side, uh, usually this piece is deteriorated all the heck. It is not on this car. It's, it's just as fresh and clean as you'd ever hope to find. The um, grip rail, same as the other side, there's absolutely no uh, marks, no dinghies whatsoever in it. Um, chrome around the wing area, as fresh as you could ever hope to find, even down here. And again, this uh, trim across the top here, Nice as you'd ever hope for. The uh, door handle, chrome is very nice on it the same way. It looks like it's original like the other side, but it doesn't have any wear or deterioration to it. 
Look at this fitment. Look at this. This is crazy. Look at this. To the hood, to the cob, to the fender, to the door, to the rocker panel. Everywhere on this thing. One door adjustment and that's it. Correct style antenna, single mast, correct style base on it with the ratcheted part base to it. Trim around this side of the windshield, which is a sunshade fade type of glass. It's just as nice as you'd ever hope to find. Darker lamp in the front. And we're back where we started again. This is a phenomenal looking car. It's a 1970 Dodge Charger, 383, four barrel, and I didn't mention, three pedal car. This guy got a four speed in it. Very, very preferential setup here. Um, it does have a set of 15 inch Kelsey wheels on it, road wheels. Um, BFG tires are all new. Back ones are gigantic. I don't know what size, but they're huge. Uh, tinted glass on the bucket seats. Um, just anything that you could think of that you'd want in a Dodge Charger you have in this car. It has a phenomenal color combination. It's got a black interior in it. It's a red car. Uh, white bumblebee stripe across the back. 500 designation on it. Uh, it's just a, just a very, very difficult car to find. Uh, we've had a few of these through the years. Um, 68, 69, and 70. And uh, it's been at least six months, maybe even longer than that, maybe closer to eight or nine months since we've had one. And now we have two. Kevin got us a, a 69, which is over here, and we have a 70 also, which we just received. So uh, we're doing a video on that one. The 69 is already up for you to take a look at. And it's also a three-pedal car with a 383, so take a look at that one too. It's here at Hangsters in Daytona Beach. And as always, we encourage everyone to come down and uh, look at these vehicles in person because, you know, I keep stating we have 40, roughly 40 on the website. There's 80 cars in the building. Come take a look at them. You know, you might come to look at this Charger and end up buying that 69 or end up buying that Demon or, or who knows what else, 70 Chevelle. Uh, there are so many cars to choose from. Take a look at them. But if you can't come down, that's why we're doing these videos for you to uh, uh, just determine uh, exactly everything that you want in a vehicle. Take a look at them. Devin's going to give you 90 to 100 high resolution videos also to view. So it's available here at Hangsters at Daytona Beach. Okay, okay this is the uh, interior of our really bright red uh, 1970 Dodge Charger 500. Headliner, nice and tight, nice as can be. Dome light that is functioning. Uh, the uh, dash pad is. is Totally free of any uh, chips or marks or deviations or cracks, nothing whatsoever. The soft part on the dash, well actually it's supposed to be soft, it isn't, it's hard. Uh, there's no cracks or, or imperfections in it also. The switches themselves are very nice and clean and clear. It has a uh, tachometer, it has a speedometer, it has a quadrant of gauges with it. Um, aftermarket radio, I don't know who it is, Devin will have to figure out how to work that. Um, seat belts in the back, seat belts in the front. Um, sun visors, uh, I'm jumping all over the place here, sun visors are the original ones, um, the, the stitching is nice and tight yet on them, the padding is still there, uh, there's no uh, uh, stitching coming loose whatsoever. The back uh, seat upholstery matches the front, which is also correct style upholstery for 1970. It's kind of a basket weave inset with the uh, high back bucket seats in the front, and of course the insets are the same in the back to match the front. Uh, trash trays in the back, trash tray in the front. Look at that, spotlessly clean even. Uh, the uh, side panels in the back are nice and fresh and clean. There's no deterioration whatsoever on the top of them or the door panels themselves either. You can see the window cranks are just as fresh and clean and shiny, same as they are on both doors in the front, our remote control mirror. The um, door actuating hardware, nice and shiny and fresh on it. The panels themselves. There's no deterioration on the top or the bottom of them. There's a couple of auxiliary speakers very tastefully put in uh, the uh, door panels. There's two in the back on the hatch shelf too, so must have a fairly decent sound system in it. Uh, steering wheel is aftermarket. It's a uh, Grant GT wheel. Uh, it's a nice addition to this car. It gives it a little more uh, steering resolution with the smaller diameter wheel. Also, it makes it easier to get in and out of the car. Uh, Loop pile carpeting just the way it would have been from the factory in 1970. Glove box, bunch of, uh, there's the original manual, 
bunch of paperwork in there for the, uh, the car. Key to the whole operation, check this out. Is this sweet or what? Pistol grip shift or four speed? Uh, everybody's uh, preference on a Mopar is to have a four speed in these cars, and especially with a pistol grip. Everybody loved those uh, shifters on them. Uh, again, even look inside the uh, uh, chrome part of the uh, wing area. Usually this is deteriorated. It is not. It is as fresh and clean as can be. The uh, rubbers, the seals on this vehicle are all fresh and resilient. When you look inside the doors, the car looks like it's brand new. There's no deterioration. There's no dirt, no crud in there whatsoever around the, the hinge area. Just an exemplary um, 1970 Dodge Charger. Uh, and it is a three-pedal car with a 383 four-barrel. And it, bear in mind, this is not an RT. If this were an RT, it would be knocking on the six-figure door. You're going to buy this car for substantially less than that and still have very close to the same performance and absolutely the same looks. There's no difference whatsoever from an RT other than a couple badges to this car. Now, it's a fantastic car. It's a great color combination. It's a, uh, a great addition to anyone's collection. A very difficult car to find. Like I said, this is the first time in about eight months that we've had not one, but two. We got a 69 and a 70. Take a look at it. It's here at Hanksters in Daytona Beach. Okay, we gotta make this quick. We're up to 150 outside now. Um, everything in this thing appears to work. Even the radio. Devin just had the radio working, but the tachometer is working as it should. You can see it uh, functioning as it should. The speedometer, I'm sure, is going to work. Gas gauge shows a little over a quarter of a tank. Temperature just starting to come up. We just uh, I just turned it on here. The amp uh, oil pressure nice and high. Amp gauge, you can see it blinking. Also, you can see our right turn signal blinking as it should over here. I don't know if you see it or not, but there's one right there blinking. That's the left turn signal. Um, let's see here. Whippers. Let's see your whips. Oh, might have to adjust that. Definitely have to adjust the wipers. But they do work. That's a good point. Uh, adjustable uh, remote mirror on the outside. It works. Horn. Horn's working as it should. Radio. Like I said, Devin had it working here in a second. What will you do? Turn this thing? That's volume. How do you make it do different things? Down. I understand. Instead of somebody who was just like making there. a line and now all of a sudden... There it is. Radio making noise. All right. Alright, let's go for a ride in this guy and see how it runs. Okay, let's see. 70 charger. We've got a steering wheel and it pulls off to the right. I don't know why it's pulling off to the right, but it does. Every time. We've got to fix that. Whatever it is, we got to fix it. Okay, we're going to try brakes. No hands. It really pulls off to the right. So I'm going to guess that we have a brake hanging up. Let me try something. Here. On. Now let's see if it still pulls. Yeah, it still pulls. There's something that uh, could be tire pressure. We haven't checked anything out on this car at all yet. I mean, absolutely nada. Uh, so we're doing it, trying to get these videos up as fast as we can show you the cars that we have in inventory. So far, the only thing we can tell you that we have to fix is that door. It needs adjusted just a little tiny bit in. And now we have a uh, situation where it pulls off to the right. So uh, Roger's going to have to take a look at that and figure out why. Oh, our wipers too. Our wipers are uh, banging themselves uh, on the seat for some reason. for some reason. I don't know why. It's just pulling us to the right. I figure out. There's got to be a brake hanging up. Either that or tire pressure is not 
be, but uh, it could be almost anything. At any rate, it won't be that way when you buy the car. Uh, the door will be adjusted, the wipers will work the way they're supposed to work, and it won't be pulling off to the right-hand side. Anything that we show you in these videos, we go back and address. And those are items that uh, obviously have to be addressed prior to the uh, delivery of this vehicle, and they will be done. Uh, so we're not going to send out a vehicle that uh, pulls away this one does or wipers and whack the face of the uh, windshield. Um, all that needs to be fixed, and it will be. But other than that, aesthetically, this car is really nice. The paint's phenomenal on it. The fit is fantastic, with the exception of the left door that needs adjusted. Uh, everything works on the dashboard, the gauges and everything. It's a nice, it's a nice running car. This is the uh, underside of our, as you can tell, rotisserie restored 1970 Dodge Charger 500. Um, very well done vehicle. Very well done. Um, drum brakes in the front, drum brakes in the rear. They did not go with the discs. At this point in time, Mopar drums were as good as the other manufacturers' discs were anyway. The uh, sway bar in the front has neoprene bushings in it. There's new shocks in the front, uh, new steering uh, um, tie rod ends. The steering box appears to be original yet. A new uh, pitman arm, new idler arm. No leaks whatsoever in the uh, oil pan area, the engine area. You can see everything is fresh and clean uh, the way it should be. There's no cover over the uh, clutch uh, area. A lot of people in the south leave those off simply to allow some air to uh, circulate around there and keep things cool. Uh, clutch discs, automatic transmission fluid, everything will last a heck of a lot longer if you leave that off in the south. Obviously, if you drive it in the snow and the slop, which most people don't anyway, in the north, you have to put that back on. But at this point, it's off for ventilating purposes. The uh, headers are a long tube system. Uh, I'm going to call them inch and three quarters going into three inch collectors. The uh, starter <coughs> is a conventional Mopar starter. It is not a gear reduction starter. The um, drop downs in the uh, front fenders here, your little skirting that comes down and transitions over to the subframes, which are totally undisrupted. There's no indication that they've ever been bumped, that they've suffered any trauma, which we do that from the radiator core support uh, through the years. Uh, 833 Mopar heavy duty tranny, nobody's ever broken one of those. Uh, the uh, subframes have a couple little jack marks on them through the years. There's one here. There's none on the skirting, by the way, but there's one there, there's one there. And let's see here, there's one here. I don't see another one. The transitional piece of subframe that goes for your rear mount. You've got two tra uh, engine mounts, you've got one transmission mount back here. That's the entire mounting system uh, for the drive line in these vehicles. Just as nice as uh, could possibly be. You can see that someone took a lot of care to clean off all the sound deadener from the vehicle whenever they did the restoration to uh, paint the vehicle all at one point to make it all red underneath. Didn't come from Mopar this way, but people a lot of times whenever they aren't concerned about originality but are more concerned about making a show vehicle will do that. Uh, the uh, brake lines are new ones. They are the wire wound type of uh, brake line system parking brake assembly the same way. It's all new. All your cables, all your actuators are all new for that vehicle. Uh, fuel line, um, also a new fuel line going toward the back on the inside of that uh, rocker panel. And where the, uh, the, the, the floor pans transition on to the rocker panels, it still has the original pinch wells on just the way they should be. No, uh, no leaks whatsoever on the bell housing area, the transmission, or the tail shaft. I can't really see it. Yeah, new U joint and the uh, drive shaft in the front. Three inch collectors transition into three inch pipes that go into an X pipe here uh, to help flow characteristics of the vehicle and also produce a lot more mid range torque. Going into a set of MagnaFlow stainless steel uh, mufflers, have a real nice deep throaty sound to them. Uh, floor pans themselves, there's no dents or dings whatsoever in them. You can see everything is just the way it, it was when it was uh, put on uh, by Chrysler. There's some, uh, I don't know what they are here, maybe from pulling it in and off of a uh, lift or a frame at one point. There are a couple dents in this subframe right here. Certainly nothing to compromise any structural rigidity in the thing, but it, it does have a couple dents I have to point out to you there. 
A couple jack marks along the subframe here. Another one over here by the torque box for the uh, front spring mount. The um, subframes are real nice and solid. They transition up over the uh, uh, rear differential and head toward the back and there's no marks whatsoever. The, uh, <coughs> the rear differential is an eight and three quarter heavy duty Mopar rear end. Again, it takes, it takes some serious, serious power to make one of these fail. Very few of these I've ever seen fail. I had guys, uh, friends of mine, that ran that differential with Hemis and uh, never had a problem with them. Uh, new U-joint uh, in the back of the drive shaft. I mentioned new shocks up front. It has a set of uh, air shocks in the back, which are also new. Uh, again, the rear differential. <coughs> it's hard to talk and look up at the same time. Um, rear differential has no leaks whatsoever. Heavy duty drum brakes in the back. It does have an auxiliary sway bar that someone has added to this guy. It does have a uh, sway bar. You really got to look to see it, but it is there, and it's uh, for the rear end of the vehicle. The springs have a nice curvature to them, a nice arch. The uh, spring shackles themselves are real nice and clean. Where they mount onto the uh, auxiliary subframe sections in the back, nice and clear mounting. There's no deterioration. There's no indications that the floor has ever been replaced. The drop downs in the quarters are just as fresh and clean as you'd ever hope to find. Same thing with the trunk floor. Uh, I'm going to call these two and a half inch coming out of the uh, three inch uh, Magnaflow mufflers going into two and a half inch. <coughs> Uh, exhaust pipes that go into the correct style uh, exhaust tips out back. It's got a huge amount of rubber on the back of this thing. I did take a look. There are two 75 60 15s. It's a nice set of tires on the back of this. Um, all, of, all the rubber's new on this car. It's just as uh, fresh as you could hope to find. Gas tank. Um, I'm going to call it a replacement tank, but it could be the original tank yet that someone has cleaned up. It's hard to tell. Uh, it does have a uh, a set of new straps holding it in place. Uh, the undercarriage of this vehicle is, as you can see, just as clean and, and fresh as you'd ever hope to find. It, it's obviously a, uh, a rotisserie done vehicle, uh, being that it is painted the uh, color of the uh, vehicle from Chrysler. The uh, uh, Everything in it is new. I mean, new brake lines, new uh, parking brake, new fuel lines, new shocks. Do everything. Uh, no leaks whatsoever on the uh, drive line at this point. It is a three pedal car. It's a four speed. Fantastic exhaust system. You can't look at a better exhaust system than this. And it's nice where three inch collectors go into three inch primaries, the magnet flows, and then two and a half out back. Good sounding exhaust system and a really great undercarriage for the car. Take a look at it. It's at Hangsters at Daytona.